Welcome to the Go Africa Tech for Good webinar today. Very glad to have, have you joining us from far and wide. My name is Mike Debelak and I'm the Executive Director at Inclusive Business Sweden and I'll be your moderator for today. I'm very excited about today because while this is our ninth Go Africa event, this is actually the first time that we've had it online. And the first time we're able to connect with so many actors, not only in, here in Sweden, but right across Sub-Saharan Africa. So welcome all. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to have a quick word about the theme of today, the power of technology. Now, I think many of us are feeling like this guy now, uh, somewhat isolated, uh, maybe a bit afraid of the future, staring way too much at a computer screen and wishing you'd got another cup of coffee before starting this webinar. Now, these are strange and difficult times we're living in. And while technology won't solve all our problems, it can be a powerful tool to help, it, help us navigate the tough times ahead. Now, this event wasn't originally planned as an online event, with the, but with the coronavirus, we made it online. And while that has its drawbacks, it's also allowed us to reach out to connect with each other. And it's only the power of technology today that allows us to do this. So we hope that this event serves as some inspiration to help us to continue to collaborate to help us solve problems, and even to help us have a laugh together during these tough times. I hope this webinar serves as an inspiration and opens up some opportunities for real collaboration. So with that in mind, um, we'd just like to present the agenda for today. Um, I'm gonna be um, as brief as I can with a little bit of a introduction right now. Um, but really, we have um, a number of organizations that we'll be presenting today, which we're very excited about. We have, um, after my introduction, will be the uh, Norquen Foundation talking about their um, Corona Action Initiatives. Um, um, and following that, we'll be getting into um, two rounds of, of short pitches by eight businesses, eight Swedish businesses that we've been working with um, on and off over the last six months um, that we'll be um, presenting very briefly a little bit about their initiative and how their technology is used to, to make a, contribution, uh, a positive contribution to society. Um, there'll be time for Q&A uh, after each of, these, uh, each of these sessions and then we'll kind of wrap up uh, to finish off the webinar at about three o'clock. Um, a little bit about us at Inclusive Business Sweden. Um, we're uh, an organization based out of uh, Gothenburg in Sweden with a mission to enable business to meet global development needs. Um, and we very much focus on working with developing markets, um, both uh, engaging with um, local businesses in those markets, but also um, with Swedish businesses. And we do this through um, three main ways. One, what we call ecosystem management. And this is something where we try to connect people, uh, connect people, connect actors, uh, particularly ac across Sweden that work in this space, um, but also connect with a global community. And this is really what GoAfrica is, is a big, uh, is, it's a big part of, of uh, the GoAfrica program is around kind of managing this network and connecting people. And we hope to do more of that today. Secondly, we offer business services um, to help businesses you know, develop their business models, enter new markets, find partners, find financing and investment, measure their impact and so forth. And then finally, we are involved in, in several collaborations for development, which is where we work with um, actors, business, government, academia, civil society um, to try to meet uh, development goals and try to um, focus on working towards the sustainable development goals collaboratively. So that's very briefly about us and I won't go any further into that. Um, so to start, I'd also like to know a little bit more about you, about uh, who, is, who is out there in, in, in cyberspace. Um, and so we have a few questions and if the technology works, those questions will come up on your screen. So the first question is, what uh, type of organization do you represent? Are you a private company, government organization, not-for-profit or an academic institution? 
So we can just get a quick mix of the 53 or so participants we have uh, joining online. Okay, if we can briefly see the results. Okay, so almost uh, almost half of you out there are, are private companies, quite a few not-for-profits as well. Good to see that mix. Uh, if we go to the next question. To what extent do you use digital technology for creating social or environmental impact? We want to know of all, of all the participants, I mean, how much are you actually using digital technology? Uh, not much at all. Is it sort of a low part of what you're doing or is it a large part of what you're doing? Okay, it's interesting mix. So there's there's uh, some that that don't um, maybe using technology as as much, um, and about ev an even number that are doing it to a medium to to large extent. But it looks like most people are using technology in some way, or at least uh, the ninety four percent are using technology in some way to 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 make impact on the work they do. Okay, one more question. We'd like to know where you're focusing when you talk about the sustainable development goals, which we're all uh, familiar with, I believe. Um, which one do you most focus on? We'll just get you to choose one. Um, obviously, we work right across, uh, a lot of us work right across the sustainable development goals, but if there's one that you focus on, where, where would that be? And I think you can scroll down if you want to find the others. Okay, so you can see the results. Okay, so there's a few that work with uh, decent work and economic growth, sustainable cities and communities, climate action, and a lot of partnerships to achieve the goal, a lot of partnering going on. That's good to see, and that's a big part of what uh, also what today is about. So thanks for that. Uh, we'll move on from those questions now. It's good to get a, get a view of, of who's out there, uh, very briefly. Um, just uh, going to Go Africa. I mean, Go Africa is a program which is supporting Swedish SMEs to successfully enter and do business with Sub-Saharan Africa. We say it's a program. It's actually made up of three projects that started in 2016, um, and we're currently in the thir third of those projects, uh, which we call Go Africa Tech for Good. Something that's been run by Inclusive Business Sweden and financed by uh, Tillväxtverket, which is the Swedish agency for economic uh, and and regional growth just for a little bit of a background. Um, we have one of the main components of Go Africa since the early days has been um, trying to develop a community of both Swedish and Sub-Saharan Sub African businesses that want to connect and engage um, in um, sustainable development and in doing business together. Um, and then if we can share the uh, link uh, through the chat function to the Facebook page, uh, you can see the, the link below. Um, but we invite everyone to, to join this community and we'd like to let you know that it's a, that's an open platform. So uh, if you have things that you would like to share um, through this Facebook platform, um, you're able to share um, posts um, on this community. If you have news or events or, or opportunities, 
uh, for collaboration that are, that are out there or if you're looking for partners and so forth, um, you can share through this platform as long as it has uh, a focus on um, Swedish African business to business collaborations for sustainable development. Uh, we'll be happy to to have it up on this platform. So it's a good channel for you to share different things and to get news from others around what is going on when it comes to Swedish um, sub Saharan African collaborations. So today we're here uh, to talk about um, tech for good. Um, and this program is focused on working with a number of Swedish SMEs that have a proven digital solution that are looking to enter or scale in the sub-Saharan African market. Um, and we have eight of the businesses that we've been working with that we'll be presenting today. Here are some of the, the presenters for today. You can see those businesses are on the right um, and we're about to start soon with uh, initial, because you, know, you have to talk about Corona in every webinar these days. So we'll have an initial uh, presentation from Northwind around their Corona actions and, and also how you can engage with that. Finally, we want to be interactive around this. Um, so as you hear people presenting, um, the suggestion is as a participant um, that you actually think about um, possibilities uh, here and that you, that you, have, you, you, you think while, while listening to these presentations. If you think that there's any of these businesses that you could collaborate with in a, in a, in a positive way, please um, share it through the chat channel. If you have any feedback, suggestions, contacts, wise words of advice for these businesses, please put those in the, in, the, in the chat function. The suggestion is you make sure to put the business name in so that we can direct it to the right person. And what we'll be doing is we'll be saving all the content from the chat function and following up and sharing that with the panelists um, so that we'll be able to hopefully help facilitate um, some collaborations. You know, our focus uh, on, on this program is supporting Swedish businesses, but what we really would like to do is make sure that we're supporting very productive and impactful collaborations between these organizations. You'll see that chat function at the bottom and on the right, you will see um, that you can share the, the chat with all panelists in attendance. To start, I would like to do, just try, try that out and I would like everybody to go to the chat, chat room and also just to get an idea of who's out there, um, just to, to type in the chat um, who you are your name, your organization, and what, what country you're based. Um, and to make sure to share that with all panelists and attendees, so everybody could see who else is in the room. You don't have to share email addresses and you don't have to, if you, if you don't want to share your, na your name and organization, but it's just a good way to, to know who's in the room. So if everyone can do that in the chat function now, uh, that would be great. Uh, while you're doing that, I'll also mention we have a Q&A function. So if there's a specific question you would like us to ask during the webinar to one or more of the presenters, you can actually post that um, in the, uh, the Q&A function and you can actually vote for the type of questions that you think are good questions. So if someone posts a question, you think, oh, that's a good question. I'd like to know the answer to that question as well. You can actually vote for that. And we'll communicate the, 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 the most voted um, uh, questions around that. So for now, we just ask you to share your, your, the, your name, uh, organization name and country in the Q&A function before we get started. So that's it for the introduction. I tried to keep that as brief as possible, um, but uh, now we're gonna get into the exciting part of today. Um, and I'd like to welcome, first of all, uh, Savannah Wilson, who's the expansion lead at Northwind Foundation. Um, welcome, Savannah. Hi Mike, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to speak to you guys today. Um, so Mike, you can click next. Yes. Next again, it'll be the video. Okay, great, we'll go straight to that, okay. Tell them go ahead. 
Every day we see new problems. And the old solutions just can't keep up. We need new solutions that grow exponentially, outpacing even the biggest problems. The question is, how do we get there? If you're a tech entrepreneur today, you have access to powerful support. I will make you an offer for the full £200,000. And if you make it big, the world is at your feet. He can pull that off, I can't. What if the entrepreneurs using technology to create positive impact would get the same treatment? Shouldn't they? At Norscan, these are the tech entrepreneurs we support. Our fund invests in the tech entrepreneurs with the greatest chance of having a positive impact. Our co-working space gives them a workplace with everything they need to grow. If we offer you the best space in the world, then you can do the best work in the world. Our partners provide them with resources and experience. With the right investments and the right space, we want to make sure that the best impact entrepreneurs have the best chance of succeeding. Because in the end, it's really quite simple. If they win, we all win. Thanks, Mike. Well, while he's getting the presentation up and running, I can, I can already start. So I thought it would be good just to give you a little bit of an introduction about what we do. So as you've seen in the video, um, just the next, next slide after that, uh, basically Norskin supports entrepreneurs in two ways. The first is through our VC fund and it's backed by unicorn founders, which invest in companies that are set to radically improve the world. And the second is through a co-working space where we have 425 impact entrepreneurs in Stockholm. Uh, and my role is working on our first expansion and that is going to be to Rwanda where we're building a hub for entrepreneurship. Um, so you can click the next slide. So this is our hub in Stockholm and then next slide. Sorry, Mike, next slide. Perfect. Uh, this is a render of our space in East Africa. So this is, if you, sorry, Mike, if you just go back one slide, just the image. Uh, this is a render of our space in Rwanda. And you might be asking, why did we choose, why did Dorskin decide their first expansion should be in Rwanda? And it's for a couple of reasons, but the main ones was because of Rwanda's strategic location. It acts as a gateway to East Africa and Central African markets. It also ranks higher than any other African country on the ease of doing business, according to the World Bank. And innovation and entrepreneurship have been defined as key focal points. So we thought this was a great opportunity for us to contribute. Uh, the main goal for our space is to build a space where entrepreneurs can come with an idea and they can grow and scale them across Africa. So we're planning on providing entrepreneurs with hands-on support, an international network, and also access to capital. We are in the process of setting up an African seed fund. Next slide. So then just to give you a little bit of insight on, of course, the big topic is Corona. Uh, so Norskin's big belief is that no challenge is bigger than our collective ability to solve it. So true to form, uh, we partnered with Dagens Industry and Nordic Capital to set up Action Against Corona. It's a platform that gathers initiatives, partners and volunteers. It was built in three days. Uh, it collected a thousand applications from 75 different countries. It looks really small there, but in terms of Africa, uh, Kenya and South Africa and Nigeria were the highest, um, had the highest percentage of applications. Uh, we had 128 partners offering support and over 200 volunteers who signed up just to help. Uh, and we also have to say like a big thank you to NASDAQ because actually the initiative was advertised in Times Square. Uh, so we got a lot of exposure thanks to them. 
so this really does show how tech can be harnessed to enable entrepreneurs globally to solve a global problem. Next slide. I just wanted to also give you an example of the type of the type of initiatives that came through and, and the ones that we supported. Uh, so for example, AMREF, I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with them, I hope you are. Uh, they disseminate training for healthcare workers on preventative treatment measures for the virus via a mobile platform in Kenya. And they're actually expanding to Ethiopia, Malawi, and Uganda. Another organization is called Lifeline Robotics. They are actually developing a robotic arm capable of testing patients for corona, uh, which will reduce the need for healthcare staff to administer these type of tests. And then the last one, just to give you a feel for it, uh, Kelowna AB is developing an over-the-counter test that can detect viral genomes from throat swabs. So the test does not require lab testing and you actually get the results in five minutes. Next slide. And then onto the exciting part, we actually scaled. So our platform then inspired um, action, um, Corona Action Rwanda. And we teamed up with some great organizations, Jasiri, the Rwandan Ministry of Innovation and ICT, Inkomoko and Vestevele to set up this sort of replica platform, uh, specifically to source and support Rwandan-based startups, focus on mitigating the effects of corona. The application deadline for the startups was actually last Friday, um, and we received 464 initiatives, and 27 partners have signed up to support. The process now is we're in the screening process and all the shortlisted candidates will receive access to corporate partners that are willing to assist with pro bono services and discounted services. And then finally, grants will be awarded on the 5th of June. Um, this really hopefully does show that tech can be scaled globally and it can be used to support local solutions. Uh, we are still actively looking for partners, uh, so feel free to reach out and apply on the website or reach out to me. Uh, we are still hoping to provide more support to these startups. And also, please feel free to follow Norskin uh, to keep updated with our expansion plans, because we will obviously be needing lots of your support when we get down there. Uh, and that is all for me. I would love if anyone has any questions. Great. Thanks very much, Savannah. Um, we do have one question here, um, which is, uh, would like to know what are the plans for uh, Norskin to launch in uh, Ghana, West Africa? And I think we could probably maybe open up that question. Uh, what are your plans to expand this initiative into uh, other markets uh, in Africa? Absolutely. So I'm, I'm delighted that that question came up because I am very much in need of your support. Um, you, you will all decide how we scale. We're really looking for partners who we can scale with because I really like that partnership came up as one of the, the top priorities of most organizations. We know that we, in order to scale, we need to form partnerships. So our goal is to get on the ground. I'm currently in Zimbabwe. As soon as I can be on the ground in Rwanda, sort of source partners that could potentially scale. I think Ghana would be a fantastic next step. Anyone have any of those ideas or initiatives or want to sort of scale there, um, I would love to talk to you. Great. Were there any other questions there? I'm not too sure if people are using or looking at the Q&A function, um, but you're able to po post questions while the presenters are speaking. Uh, any other questions or shall we move forward? We'll move forward in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Um, so thank you very much, Savannah. Uh, great to hear more about uh, what uh, Norquin is doing. And, um, uh, you know, we've had been having some conversations with you uh, over, the, over the last few weeks. And, uh, you know, we hope that we can also be here to support. And I'm sure that there are a few others uh, online that would be happy to connect. So if, if, if there is something, feel free to share it once again through the, the chat function if you are interested in, in different types of collaborations or go to, to uh, Norwen's um, um, Corona Action Rwanda uh, website. Thank you very Thanks, much. Frank. Okay, we'll move on to the next presentation. Let me just 
Q&A. Um, so we have the next four businesses. We're going to have these four businesses present. Um, and, uh, uh, and then uh, have some questions for all four of them. So please put up your questions um, on Q&A. And, &A, and if, you, if you're interested in connecting with any of these businesses after, um, make sure to put uh, some comments into the chat function. Okay, first, uh, welcome Andreas from Troyen. Hi there, um, and thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so I'm Andreas, like mentioned, one of the founders of Trine, um, and we are a leading financier in the off-grid solar energy industry, and in particular um, only in emerging markets, so in uh, East Africa, West Africa, and uh, Latin America and Southeast Asia. Uh, based in Sweden and in Kenya, looking at an expansion in Nigeria relatively soon, um, and what we provide is debt capital, so working, cap uh, working capital finance for solar systems in order to mainly solve SDG 7, which is the energy access um, SDG. Um, so far we have, I would say, relatively well succeeded in that mission. Um, we have provided over 35 million euros in the last four or five years um, to those entrepreneurs that are in, in dire need of financing. And we've also proven our business model in terms of that we have received uh, over 10 million euros in repayments to our investors. Um, all of that finance went to uh, roughly over uh, around 30 borrowers, 30 SMEs, uh, and was raised by uh, over 10,000 investors, mainly in Sweden. And, and what we believe in is that impact investing is the new investing. Uh, it shouldn't actually have a term. It should be the norm. And we focus on people, planet, profit, and therefore I also put what we have achieved so far in terms of uh, CO2 uh, emissions reduction, um, which is obviously a huge uh, challenge these days, and also giving electricity to over 2 million people that are currently living without energy in, in the rural sides of, of uh, those countries. Um, if you want to jump to the next slide. So, so what do we really do? Because that was obviously a lot of high level information. Um, we see ourselves as the future of digital finance. So like I said, we, we connect investors um, in Sweden, um, but actually it's accessible from all over Europe uh, to those SMEs, to those borrowers in emerging markets. Um, and those investors is anybody from individuals, like uh, anybody in this webinar basically, that can invest anything from 25 euros to institutions, um, so development banks, um, development institutions, and we're kind of blending them together in order to provide the capital that is needed. Um, so we, we have investors that invest for the social impact or the environmental impact, but also in order to diversify the portfolio um, and, and invest in markets that are not as correlated to the traditional investments um, as they are in here in Sweden. And on the borrower side, which is probably even more interesting for this webinar, is we, we focus on SMEs, like I mentioned before, uh, that uh, operate within the SDG 7, which is mainly in our focus, the solar energy part. Um, so solar home system distributors, mini grid installers, and also commercial and industrial uh, installations. Uh, so anything that is in factories and that basically reduces the emissions from diesel generators, uh, kerosene lamps, with, uh, and, and replaces it with much uh, cleaner electricity. Um, and for those uh, SMEs, we provide uh, very short lead times because we're digital. Um, we do everything through an, an online uh, site. Uh, we therefore, because we're more efficient, can also provide lower cost of capital than traditional investors, in particular local uh, banks that are often very expensive. Um, and we're very flexible because we're really building a product here that is targeting this off-grid solar industry business models. Um, at the same time as it is very scalable. So we are going in from anything from 100,000 euros to uh, 10 million, um, as long as it makes business sense. Um, and we are very digital, obviously. So we're trying to really improve this uh, every day. And um, basically the reason yeah, for me to be here, um, yeah, I mean, there's four, four kind of um, 
companies or partners we're looking for. I mean, the first one is relatively obvious in borrowers and it's solar distributors in off-grid solar uh, that are, or companies that are developing mini grids or uh, project developers for CNI installations in emerging markets. Um, I would happily hear from anybody that is in, in uh, looking for scalable commercial finance. Um, anywhere, basically, we have a heavy focus on Kenya or East Africa, where we're also operating more and more in West Africa with uh, yeah, Nigeria being the target market mainly. Uh, and we also have operations in uh, Latin America and Guatemala and Colombia and in Asia, Pakistan, Myanmar. But we're very country, uh, we're very open to any country as long as it's not uh, maybe North Korea. Um, so very open for opportunities. Uh, Co-investors as well. Um, so like I said, uh, obviously retail investors, so anybody that wants to put their money to uh, impactful finance is more than happy, uh, welcome to join us. Uh, but also uh, institutional investors uh, that want to invest alongside the retail investors or even provide first loss uh, funding. This is something that we're currently really work hard working on to reduce the risk towards retail clients. Um, grant and guarantee providers. Um, so we are working with CEDA currently, uh, where we got a guarantee, but we have been nearly utilizing the guarantee fully. And we are currently talking with a lot of providers out there to um, for the next level of a guarantee mechanism or even co-funding that is uh, similar as a first loss. Um, and then lastly, technical assistance. So we, like I said, we're looking into uh, commercial industrial and mini grids. Our focus has been heavily on the solar home system space. That's an industry that we understand very well. But the technological issues there are very minor because it's really a plug and play product. But now we're really looking at big installations. Um, so anybody that can help us with technical assistance of mini grids, uh, CNI installations, or anything in the size of 100 kilowatt upwards, that would be very helpful. Thanks. <clears throat> Hello, is this, so this is Caroline speaking, is this ready for me? Apologies, now I was uh, muted. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, thank you very much, Andreas. Now we'll move on to the next speaker, which is Caroline from Adresia. Welcome, Caroline. Thank you very much, Mike. So, um, actually, you could change the slides for me. So if you can move to the first slide, please. For many people around the world, uh, this is what an address sounds like. Behind the petrol station, take the street that leads to where the church once stood, our house on the right after the third mango tree and the door is gray. In fact, about 4 billion people, that is half of the world's population, are suffering from the lack of addresses. And that means that they are not able to fully exercise their civil rights get access to banking and insurance, uh, or even uh, products on the world market and home delivery or emergency services. And having an address is really about both identity and being able to find and being found. So it is about essential infrastructure. And we believe that the COVID-19 pandemic has also highlighted the urgent needs for adequate addressing uh, infrastructure in many countries because it basically helps finding places of great importance, such as hospitals, pharmacies, health centers. And during a lockdown uh, situation that we've seen in most countries, they make it possible to receive home delivery, groceries, medication, and other essential services to your doorstep. So the lacking infrastructure leaves many people behind, and that results also in high costs and inefficiency in delivery and distribution. And we really want to help society be ready to cater for everyone, to respond fast and efficiently to everybody's need uh, in a pandemic uh, or health emergency or another emergency. But perhaps most importantly, to provide equal access to public and private goods and services in general and during normal times. So uh, rolling out addressing infrastructure is very expensive and it's both costly in time and time consuming. Um, and very often it doesn't reach all corners of the country. But uh, we have a solution to that. Uh, next slide, please. So 
Address is an app and a platform that allows everyone to register a complete, precise, and easy to use address and then share it with individuals, businesses, and governments for access to goods and services. As the owner of the address, uh, you always decide with whom you share it and for how long. So you are in control and your privacy is always protected. We also believe having an address is a civil right, and that is why creating, using, and sharing an address will always be free for individuals. But we have developed a business solution that we call addressing as a service that targets any company, uh, organization, or government um, function that requires functional addressing uh, to do their work more efficiently. And addressing as a service, it helps increase customer satisfaction and reduce cost for last mile delivery, and also improve planning and logistics. And shops and restaurants and other businesses can also make their address public so that it makes it easier for their customers to find them. For government, this essentially means better planning and logistics in a time of crisis. And with fast and efficient last mile delivery and better organization, more people can be served and government resources spent in a most, more efficient way. What we, what we really want is to empower individuals, businesses and governments through functional addressing and to sort of tighten the nuts and bolts in the existing infrastructure and enable efficient growth in formal sectors such as e-commerce. So Addressia basically connects those who have an address with those who do not and enables efficient communication around place between the city centers, informal settlements and rural areas. So it's really for everyone. Uh, and we are looking for partners and businesses who are ready to contribute and benefit from this development. Uh, maybe I can ask for the next slide. Um, so please get in contact with us. We are currently in Rwanda. And if you don't know where to find us, don't worry, we'll address you. Thank you. Great. Nice, nice finish, Colin. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, Great, we'll move on to the next uh, presentation, which is uh, Monica Pekovic from Bionate. Welcome, Monica. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm just trying to start my video here, uh, here but um, it seems like I'm not allowed. So uh, unless, Mike, you can connect me, I'm just going to uh, go with the voice. You can start and we can sort, and sort it out as we go. Yes. Daniela. So. Um, Bionate. So my name is Monica and I'm Chief Growth Officer at Bionate and uh, what our vision at Bionate is, uh, is to create uh, equal, uh, more affordable and more accessible healthcare. Um, and that's what we are trying to do with our product Itopia. If I may ask for a next, next slide. Uh, uh, one slide back. <laughs> Yes, there. Uh, yes, so what is Itopia? Uh, as you can see on the picture to the right, it's uh, an application that you can currently download on Google Play Store. Uh, it is free of charge, and we tend to describe it as your personal AI doctor. So that means that Itopia provides you with instant, instant healthcare 24-7 uh, wherever you are. So how it works basically is that you download the app and you can create your profile. And if you have any symptoms, for example, um, if you have any health-related symptoms, so you can do a health checkup for free. Um, and with the help of artificial intelligence, you're going to be provided with the suggestion of diagnosis that may be a cause for your symptoms. Um, however, we are not, uh, we are not um, diagnosing you, but we are just providing you a suggestion of the possible diagnosis that you may have. Um, together with that, we are going to provide you with the customized recommendations based on the uh, level of care that you may need. Everything ranging from the self-care to uh, call to um, uh, go to the emergency room, depending on your condition. Um, so we have uh, launched new Itopia version recently that includes very important feature and that is online consultations with medical doctors. Um, so basically now you can purchase in the app uh, consultation with the doctor at a very, very affordable uh, price comparing to the market in East Africa, for example. Um, 
So uh, when it comes to our business model, we have some in-house medical doctors, but our goal is not to employ medical doctors, but rather to partner with individual practitioners and small clinics, uh, meaning that we want to support locals and we want to create uh, more work there. Um, so uh, basically we are partnering with the medical doctors and enabling them to take um, cases that they want uh, at time and pace they want. So, so we are providing them with the flexibility uh, to work at the pace they want. Um, as a patient, uh, so once you have downloaded the app, you can perform, as I said, a free health checkup, and then you can purchase online consultations with our doctors if you want so. Uh, and you can also be connected to the clinics uh, if you have to be connected. Um, also, our medical doctors can um, give you referrals to physical consultations if you need to meet specialists or um, if you need to do any lab tests, for example. Um, and uh, right now we are partnering with the biggest online pharmacy in Kenya. So we are trying to make completely digital experience for our user from the moment when one um, go through the uh, health checkup, purchases a consultation with the doctor, and then uh, getting the prescription to delivering medication to your home. Um, when it comes to our coming projects, so right now we are making a new app for healthcare professionals that is going to enable faster communication. So we are basically a platform that is connecting doctors and patients. Um, when it comes to uh, partners that we are looking into, so as I mentioned, it's online pharmacies, but um, at the moment we are trying to scale up in um, East Africa um, with the focus on Kenya firstly, and uh, that means that we are looking into partnering with uh, telecommunication companies um, and for, exa for example, insurance companies uh, besides from um, small clinics and individual practitioners. Um, yeah, I think uh, that would be everything from our side. So uh, basically, we are trying to create uh, more affordable and more accessible healthcare uh, for people there that are in need, actually. And um, if I may just touch upon the corona situation, uh, so this kind of a solution is not available in these regions yet, and we really think that this may prevent spreading. This, this may prevent um, spreading of, of, uh, of the virus, just uh, uh, thinking of the fact that one may purchase consultation online and not go uh, to the hospital. Um, yes, and app has many other functions uh, as, for example, storing uh, your medical history, um, prevent, tracking your health that could uh, potentially prevent uh, some diseases um, and so on. So if you have, uh, uh, if you know of any, any partners that, uh, could be uh, valuable for us, or uh, if I have missed out maybe some, please feel free to reach us out. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Monica. Um, we'll go on to uh, one more uh, presentation before we take some questions. Um, uh, we have um, Hive Online. Uh, Matthew, welcome. Hi. Um, thanks for the opportunity to um, present today. Um, so I'm Matt, I'm a CEO of Hive Online. Um, I'm based in Stockholm. Um, at Hive Online, we're building sustainable finance solutions for underserved communities. Uh, and our mission is to make the world a fairer place for small businesses and micro entrepreneurs everywhere. We feel that they don't get the opportunities they deserve and uh, we're here to help them. Um, can we move to the next slide? Um, in a sense, we work with community groups, um, both savings groups and pharma cooperatives, to digitize what they do and to help them build those bridges to finance and the support opportunities um, that they can't get today. Um, by working in groups rather than individuals, uh, villagers and farmers both diversify their risk and collaborate together to build their collective financial well-being. And research has shown that um, they, these groups show far better financial behaviours, like re loan repayment, um, because they're working in groups and working with their neighbours and friends and family. Um, however, however, often it's really difficult for them to, to share this good financial behaviour 
wider with the the wider um, financial and um, larger ecosystem within the their their countries um, because everything is typically cash based and paper based um, which it can, becomes really typical um, so hard online has built a simple way for groups to capture their activities digitally um, predominantly at the moment um, focusing on digital accounting and managing finances within the savings groups and within the cooperatives and we build that into a, uh, a track record and a digital reputation um, someone could an alternative credit credit score that can be easily shared with other partners um, in their ecosystem like microfinance institutions um, and, and banks um, as well as NGOs um, and, and other support organizations um, our app is a web app that works pretty much on any device um, with a browser and we focused on low connectivity low data and low literacy users um, all transactions are committed to the blockchain uh, which is the first step for us to then move from um, digital accounting toward digital payments on the platform and providing um, less cash and less need for the cash in the system we're working at the moment with Care International in Niger, the least developed country in the world, uh, and have piloted the solution with 126 savings groups um, covering over 2,000 people. 95% uh, of those are women, um, and we're planning to go live uh, at the end of, the May, uh, end of May um, with that um, solution. Uh, we're working with other NGOs um, in uh, in-country private and public partnerships uh, in Mozambique um, to support farming and fishing cooperatives and helping them both build their collective wealth and professionalize their industries. Um, for both products and across the platform, we monetize through a, a small software license to show that the product is, is valuable to some extent and, and useful. Um, introduction fees for the lenders that come into the uh, ecosystem and linking those to the, to the groups and to individuals within those groups. And then later into uh, digital payments and, and a small transaction fee that we believe undercuts the, uh, the incumbent mobile um, providers. Uh, if we can move on to the next slide. Um, as a company, we're distributed um, across Denmark, Sweden, and Rwanda. Um, we see actually Rwanda as our growth um, area, and actually uh, we're talking with Norsken about uh, being hopefully one of the first people into Norsken House in, in Kigali. Uh, and then we're currently working in Niger and Mozambique, um, two of the least developed countries. Um, but as uh, as some partners have said, if we can do it there, we can do it anywhere. Um, we're a for-profit but very much focused on delivering impact and looking at um, SDGs uh, 1, 5, 8 and, and 10, predominantly focusing on, on the work and economic growth side but there are plenty of aspects around gender equality around as most of these savings groups are female. Um, uh, as a team we've got a background in financial services, uh, both me and my co-founder have worked for 10 of the, uh, the world's globally significant banks over a, a number of years. And that's really where it drove the, our passion for, for solving this. Uh, we've built a diverse team um, across a range of areas, including development and humanitarian, humanitarian aid. Um, we're looking at partnership opportunities, as you can see from the, from the bottom, looking at NGOs who have these um, groups uh, and want to digitize them. Uh, and we work on projects to, to reach out to those um, communities but also to, to connect those ecosystems with financial organizations like um, microfinance institutions who want to reach that last mile, as well as um, adjacent technologies um, for asset finance, things like clean cook stoves or um, solar panel um, installations uh, and other financing solutions for that. So um, if you're interested to know more, um, please get in touch via the website um, or on our social media channels or, or, or um, find me or, or message in the group. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, Matthew, and thank you to all the all the four speakers. Um, we have quite a few questions uh, coming in. I think a few people also want to want to reach out and connect with you. So those questions that we have around uh, connecting with some of them, as we'll follow up uh, af after this and and share some of the some of the details uh, from those people. Uh, but we have a question here, which is, um, do you think the current environment will impact the repayments? on the loans, what's your current view on the impact? So I think that's, uh, that's going to you, Andreas, but maybe also uh, Matthew, you might also have some comments uh, around that. I know it's not just loans that, that, uh, that uh, Hive does, but uh, the, the impact on those financial transactions. So maybe Andreas and Matthew, if we could uh, come back on those questions. 
Sure. Um, it's a question we're getting relatively often these days, obviously, for, for reasons, I would say. Um, actually, we haven't seen much of an impact yet. Um, we have restructures um, ongoing, but those restructures of loans are not really due to coronavirus. They're more due to um, other issues. Um, actually, uh, we see the opposite in the market. We see that uh, solar businesses are seen as essential services because they provide electricity. Uh, and often they actually sell more of their systems than they did before. So a bunch of our borrowers had uh, their best sales months during coronavirus, as long as there's no lockdown in the, in the country. So the sales agents can still go out there. Uh, so, so far, fingers crossed, um, no impact yet in the rural sites of, uh, of most of the markets, right? not all of them. Nigeria, Rwanda, Pakistan have been the three that have been hit to some extent. Everything else is actually not that bad. Um, and yeah, I suppose, um, I suppose for, for my comment, I suppose we're working really at the sort of bottom end of the uh, bottom end of the pyramid to some extent where actually the, you can see that the, the middle layers are the ones that are falling out due to, due to this um, crisis. Um, so a lot of the intra lending, I think is, is at the moment still, still there. I think there will be some challenges um, that we need to look at, but we're actually looking at how we can support with other sources of financing as well as as both loans um, once we get to a digitalized platform um, we can support for example voucher schemes or direct investment from um, aid organizations into into the groups as well to provide additional liquidity um, it's something we're monitoring um, all the time um, it's interesting you know to, to, to try and get as much information from the ground around what the impact is for uh, with corona and, and how it's really spreading i think it's still relatively early days for that um so we're, we're monitoring and seeing where we go if i could maybe ask a, a flip question to to you monica and and caroline um just around uh you know when you think about it uh, the coronavirus is probably creating uh, increased demand for for healthcare and for uh, home delivery of of different services i mean how how is this affecting your business do you see it as for your business, something that um, that that is helping your sort of business to grow and, and enable your business. Um, yes, I can take first if you want, Caroline. Um, well, it's very unfortunate what is happening, but uh, in every crisis there is an opportunity as well. And uh, when it comes to our business, we really see it as an opportunity because. Just talking to medical doctors, they're creating a network in East Africa. We can see um, that there is an increased need for uh, healthcare advices, for uh, healthcare checkups, but uh, of course, very focused to, very directed to uh, digitalization. And now we see that more and more people are seeking for these uh, digital solutions um, that they can actually use uh, in, in these times of lockdown and uh, isolation. So we have also had um, an increase in um, amount of consultations, especially related to COVID-19 lately. So, mm -hmm. um, so yes, for, for us, that's definitely an uh, opportunity, so to say. And, uh, and I think for Adressa, it's the same thing. Since our target market uh, right now is uh, online services, e-commerce, but also uh, public places, places like restaurants and, uh, and um, uh, hotels, we've had quite uh, like a varied response in the two areas. So those customers who want to find their customers, like e-commerce, online services, etc., they have increased a lot. So I think up to about four times in just six weeks in some of the, some of the markets in East Africa or and Africa as a whole, um, demand to actually get home delivery. We've seen that um, there's popping up uh, new online delivery services as well as uh, the old ones really, really increasing. Even the post office has started delivering home uh, in countries like R Rwanda, for example. Uh, and there's been a lot of collaboration going on on emergency uh, services where taxis in some countries are, are operating uh, more like emergency services and so on. So there, of course, there's a big increase in demand. Uh, on the hotels and uh, uh, restaurants and other places that may want to show their address to people, 
uh, there is a diminished demand since most of them were locked down. But on the other hand, that actually spurred us on to develop those solutions quicker because uh, we see the need to put important places like hospitals, health centers, uh, pharmacies and essential services um, available to be searchable with good addressing. So, uh, so we are working on that uh, as, as more of a societal service um, to build up that infrastructure at the moment. Great. Okay, thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll move on from here. So I'd like uh, to thank uh, Matthew, Andreas, uh, Monica and Caroline for, for coming and, sh and sharing with us. Um, as mentioned, we will keep track of all your uh, questions and uh, chat comments so that we can help uh, facilitate the relevant connections uh, after this event. So thank you. Now we'll move on to our, uh, our next batch uh, of businesses. Um, so we have another four businesses uh, ready to present. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, Joachim from Ion Sigma. Take your mute off, Joachim. Okay, somebody had to be the first to forget yeah, that. I, was, I did earlier. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Joachim. Uh, I'm uh, the founder of a, a company called, a uh, consulting company called uh, Fidendon, uh, where I do business development, especially for uh, around impact, uh, uh, a lot towards uh, uh, Sub Saharan Africa. I'm also the uh, one of the co-founders and COO of um, Ion Sigma, and uh, uh, our focus is really on digital and financial inclusion, uh, and uh, that that's really our starting point. So, Mike, maybe you can change the slide, please. Okay, very good. So, uh, we started uh, about three, four years ago, uh, and we, uh, our mission was really uh, that we felt we wanted to uh, make a, a try uh, or make a, a sort of impact uh, towards uh, financial inclusion. Uh, but what we started by realizing is that uh, digital inclusion, especially in, in, in Africa, is uh, very, very uh, uh, closely tied to uh, digital exclusion. Uh, uh, there is still today uh, about 75% of the uh, overall uh, sub-Saharan African population that are digitally excluded. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this is important in a, in a number of different uh, aspects, uh, uh, not the least in financial inclusion. So we started by uh, partnering with um, um, uh, some local partners and some uh, mobile network operators in uh, to do a couple of pilots in, in Kenya and Nigeria uh, to to uh, enable uh, uh, smartphone financing uh, and we learned a lot through that but what we also realized is that uh, really where can you make the biggest impact when it comes to uh, digital exclusion if you want to sort of uh, make life of people better it's really starts with the African uh, entrepreneurs and especially the African women entrepreneurs. So for example, the farmers, the, 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 uh, uh, the small merchants, the roadside merchants, the educators, the, the health workers, uh, that's where you can start making a lot of impact on the, the local economies and the quality of life of people. Uh, and you also see that, uh, um, uh, digital exclusion in these groups uh, is really a big uh, challenge, it's a big problem. Um, and by including uh, people digitally, um, you can start improving their lives uh, and their day-to-day -day business uh, because it makes it easier to, for, for, for the entrepreneurs to reach more customers and partners. Uh, the whole financial inclusion part about uh, payments and, and so on access to relevant information uh, through the internet that you're excluded from if you don't have a digital device. Um, learning better practices through information uh, and really being uh, active, uh, actively participating citizens in uh, the digital economy of the countries. Um, and this is also, as we were talking about partnerships before, I mean, what we see is that uh, we would very much like uh, to partner with the local and international players that uh, do uh, provide solutions when it comes to uh, payments, when it comes to savings and loan circles, 
mobile health, uh, health related information, uh, uh, companies providing education uh, uh, materials uh, delivered digitally. Because what uh, we see when we talk to, to companies uh, is that the big challenge uh, for these companies is also that so many people are still digitally, digitally excluded. So it's hard for those uh, companies to those organizations to uh, uh, deliver their services uh, if there are no digital uh, uh, platforms for to consume the contents. So we believe in a green economy. We believe in fair finance and internet for all. And uh, uh, we also believe that charity in this sense of just sending used phones is not neither sustainable nor uh, empowering. So uh, Mike, uh, next slide please. What we're doing is that uh, we are uh, targeting digital inclusion uh, really through uh, three steps. First of all, uh, we work with partners to identify uh, groups of entrepreneurs. So it could be loans and savings groups, it could be farmers, uh, uh, etc., cetera, uh, where we can assess the groups and the individuals to see, uh, can we, um, finance a smartphone uh, uh, for or lease a smartphone to uh, 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 individuals in this group and keep the uh, uh, risks under control. Um, so that's the first thing that we do. And then we raise money uh, for uh, financing these phones. And we do this in, in a number of different ways. Uh, typically, we have been working with local, uh, local microfinance banks or other local par uh, partners. Uh, but what we find there also is that it's very hard and very expensive to uh, to uh, find money locally uh, for financing. Um, so we're targeting this in in uh, different ways. I mean, we're partnering with uh, uh, providers uh, and uh, lenders uh, in the Nordics and Europe um, uh, to uh, bring the cost down. But we're also uh, asking individuals, uh, asking you to uh, uh, donate money or to uh, donate your own phone uh, 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 for us to resell and recycle so that we can help co-finance uh, uh, smartphones for uh, our individuals in, in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. And this started as a uh, project uh, uh, that we uh, participated in uh, one of the hackathons, uh, E versus virus hackathon, uh, a couple of weeks ago, where we uh, uh, provided a concept, or we were working on a concept that we call smartphonesforgood.com, um, and you can check it out, uh, where you can help us by no donating your own smartphone. And with with this initiative, what we actually did was that we won the um, a digital exclusion, the support for digital exclusion challenge uh, of, as part of the EU versus uh, virus hackathon. Uh, so please go ahead and uh, check it out. And the third thing we do is that uh, we, uh, with the money that we have raised, we are able to lease a phone, a smartphone to an entrepreneur in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and that way, work together with other partners to provide also content uh, for these entrepreneurs to, uh, for them to grow and to be able to use digital um, services. So uh, we, are, we are currently uh, on the ground in Zambia, Nigeria and Cameroon, uh, but we're also looking at uh, next uh, for Kenya and Namibia. And if you have any ideas, if you want to join us, uh, please go ahead and check us out on, on the web. And uh, yeah, I hope to hear uh, from you guys. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Joachim. Uh, and now we will move to uh, Gabriel in Rwanda. Uh, make sure to unmute. Yes, thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Uh, yeah, I think you can put on the first slide. Yeah. Yes, uh, my name is Gabriel. I'm the co-founder and managing director of Bag Innovation. I'm presenting today on behalf of the partnership between Insert Coin in Gothenburg and Bag in Kigali, Rwanda. Bag is tackling the problem that most students in East Africa upon graduation are struggling with not having enough experience or the university courses not reflecting what the employers are looking for in terms of skills. Bag is a digital platform that combines gamification and AI to revolutionize the future of career development. We cooperate with companies and universities to create case-based learning directly related to each course of the student's learning journey, 
Spending only five to 10 minutes per week on BAG increases the market readiness score of the student by more than 60%. So how does this work? One of our revenues comes from universities subscribing on the BAG solution, which in turn means that we analyze the curriculum of the students and then create practical assessments depending on the course topics and the employer skills need to let the students work with on a weekly basis. After this, after the student submits on our, our assessments this, on the platform, they will receive feedback from both the employer on what their minimum skills requirements are and from BAG in terms of career guidance and actions to take before graduation. Now, this is where the uh, collaborative with insert coin comes in. Mike, you can switch the slide there. Um, so insert coin uh, has uh, helped us with our gamification technology. And with this, we're able to enhance the, both the onboarding, the conversion, the engagement, and the retention of the students much more effectively on the platform. The students gather experience points, they upgrade in levels, and they're able to have an enjoyable experience while developing their skill sets. And this, is, this has helped us a lot to incentivize the repetitive learning process, which is hugely important for the capacity development of the students. Uh, another revenue stream we're working with is on the SME and private sector side, where we offer uh, innovative tools for talent sourcing and crowdsourcing through the Bag Innovation platform. Our initial target market is East Africa with over 5 million university students. And we are now targeting uh, in the first phase, Tanzania and Ethiopia by the end of 2020. Today, we've already worked with over 8% of the students in Rwanda with our proof of concept, and we've taken our first investment to scale our technology. We've collaborated with more than 170 companies here in Kigali and 15 universities, and proudly been, been selected as the best EdTech in East Africa by EdTechX. Um, we've now finished up our proof of concept, and we're launching our new tech update within the coming week. And on top of all this, we've also built an award-winning product that helps migrants integrate more effectively into a new work environment. But that's for another day, not, not today's pitch. So right now we're looking for partners and we're looking for early stage investors who are willing to join us after the summer to build the next generation of problem solvers in Africa. And we're ha I'm happy to answer any questions regarding doing business in East Africa or like coming to Rwanda or starting up here. And yes, BAG stands for Building a Generation. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm happy to answer any questions after the three pitches. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Gabriel. We'll move on uh, to the next. While, uh, while I'm doing that, I should also just mention to the panelists that there are some questions coming up both in the open and answered sections. Um, so if any of the panelists would, would like to answer these questions uh, directly, you can actually do that through the Q&A function by typing answers uh, in the meantime so that we can answer as many questions as possible uh, by the end of this event. But otherwise, we will reach out uh, afterwards. So next, I would like to introduce uh, Philip from Kipatana. So um, Kupatana is a classified site in Tanzania. We have a, an ambition of um, growing and becoming an East African trading platform. Um, but nope, go back to the first slide, please. Sorry, clicked on the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, we've been in business for, for uh, five years. Um, and the first part of the business has been um, where people have uploaded ads uh, for free. So our, our, our vision is to increase trade within Tanzania and then later on within East Africa. And the impact of increasing trade is obviously growth, it's uh, jobs, um, it's giving companies and individuals a, a chance to market their products um, with no cost or very little cost. Uh, so in, in Tanzania and, and East Africa, the, the the, the internet penetration is growing exponentially. When we started, there were about 12, 14 million people who accessed the internet uh, in Tanzania. Now it's close to 30. So it's growing really fast. Um, but what we've succeeded with is that we have, we have a, a great brand uh, in Tanzania. Just an example, when I came to Tanzania, this was in January before, before Corona, you, got my business visa and you filled in uh, who, um, who is the, the sponsoring company. And I wrote Kupatana and said, oh, the Tanzania and Amazon. So we've really created uh, something and, and the brand awareness out there. And we have good traffic, 5,000 visits every month. We get 30,000 listings. 
and the, the leads that are generated to our advertisers uh, is more than 100,000 every month. And um, looking at it from, 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 from a, a, a European perspective, they stay eight minutes and 80% or more come from mobiles. And that's, that, that's a long time. So all those metrics are very good. Now, we've taken the step to um, offer premiums. So the, the, the basic service is free, and then you offer premiums. We are now um, uh, going with M-Pesa, with Tigo Pesa, where you could online create, uh, you create your ad, and then you choose premium. And premium will always come before uh, the free ads. You'll, it'll be better. Be bigger and better and more exposure and you'll have also uh, retargeting outside. So all of this is happening now. So we're going live with a new pricing strategy with, with um, a connection of, of the, the, the three largest um, um, uh, telcos in, in Tanzania. So it's very exciting times. Next slide, please. So we've been, we've been in business for some time, as I said, and, but for us, the journey has just begun. We have a platform, we have a brand, we have traffic, we have leads, and we're generating inquiries to our clients. Um, so our revenue will be based on, the first initial will be based, is just the premium ads and the banner advertising um, that we already have today. We've launched an agent strategy because there is still that, you, 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 they feel that they want to have somebody to talk to. They don't really trust the cloud all that much. So having an, a representative, we've, we've, uh, we have a deal with one of the, the telcos that all their agents that sell prepaid cards, uh, they will also start selling, um, um, uh, selling and marketing premiums where they give a discount code. Um, so everybody that, uh, uses that code, that code is specifically for that agent, and they will get their commission straight in their mobile wallet. So this company has almost 100,000 agents all over Tanzania. What we're doing now is that we're building, we've, um, we, um, we're building a complete new platform in modules, um, which we hope will be ready uh, by the end of the, the summer. Um, and, and there are other features that, that will be added to it. And, but the main goal is then taking it all the way to e-commerce and expanding geographically. We're looking for um, uh, investors um, and at, at this stage. We, have, we will be doing a shares issue now. We have the, the shares issue is guaranteed. Um, and we have uh, people, uh, potential investors that have said that they're interested. But we're obvi obviously always looking for um, investors in this uh, uh, forum as well. In the long run, we're looking for partners that can help uh, with financing as, as a, um, for example, if we could have, we're talking to the Bank of Africa, um, but I, the, the, the challenge is obviously that to get financing for purchasing a car or uh, furniture or I mean what's lacking in these countries is the, the opportunity to to be able to pay for it uh, but we have the products through advertising and that's a partnership that we're looking for also insurance and logistics um, those those are, are areas that we will be looking for in partnerships in in the future so if this is something that you um, find interesting please contact me Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Philip. And now we'll move on to the uh, last presenters of today. It's uh, Mikael from Ultero. Welcome. Thank you, Mike. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Mike. I'm a co-founder at Ultero. Uh, and with me, I have my colleague, Sylvia, who helps our business development, uh, and also Jonathan, who works on our content and marketing in the audience, I think. Uh, Ultero is, um, um, a Sweden-based IT uh, company with development centers in uh, Africa. And what we really do is we're an impact tech uh, partner uh, where we work with Scandinavian businesses to, um, to support them with people and, tech and uh, uh, IT skills to be able to build and scale their solutions in Africa. 
Uh, now, from where we stand, you cannot talk about uh, technology unless you talk about people. And uh, as you start to think about scaling new technologies in uh, new markets, you, uh, you need to consider um, local environments and also uh, hopefully consider integrating uh, skills that are based in those markets uh, to co-create products together with them uh, so that they have an innovative blend um, of what the market expects. Uh, so we, uh, we were founded two years ago and we've been growing steadily and in the, we're happy to say that in, uh, in both the audience and the panel we have a few um, collab clients we've collaborated with. And uh, what we do is basically to work with impact-driven companies uh, that are either constrained by, um, by a big budget to, to, to get into the, tech, the mainstream uh, IT or tech market and, uh, and, and also the ones that uh, have a specific uh, focus on, um, um, uh, on impact objectives that align with us. Um, we are a very affordable uh, service provider, um, as well as um, a very um, um, efficient uh, provider. Um, and if you go to the next uh, slide, please. Uh, I would like to highlight on two of the key areas where we, we focus on, uh, which is we focus on on-demand software engineers based in our development centers in, uh, uh, in different parts of Africa, but mainly we've been uh, working out of Uganda and out of, uh, of Kenya. Uh, we're setting up new teams in uh, Nigeria and also in South Africa. Uh, and how these skills work is that uh, um, if you take an example of a Swedish company that's building their technology platform, uh, we rent them programmers that are based in Africa, that come at a good cost, but also that have quite top skills. Um, and we have um, a blend of different technologies that we're able to support. Uh, and we also continue to follow the latest technologies that come up on the market. Uh, on the other hand, we build and deliver uh, complete products, uh, mobile applications and web applications. Um, and this come in a range of uh, technologies and a range of, uh, uh, of tech stacks. Um, what we are looking for, we're looking for partnerships to be able to work with more, um, um, uh, more innovative solutions that are targeting uh, uh, to launch or to, uh, to collaborate in the African market, uh, as well as uh, looking for, um, uh, for new and exciting uh, opportunities where we can work together with others. Um, I, I won't take much, much time, but both me and, uh, and Susie are in the audience and will answer a few questions that you have, uh, but we're also available to um, uh, to take a discussion after this to uh, to explain and tell you more about um, how we work and um, what kind of cases would be interesting for us. Uh, thank you so much. Great, thank you very much, uh, Mikkel. Uh, we've got time for uh, some some Q and A, so if we can bring all the uh, the last round of uh, of uh, panelists back, um, we. Um, I can see that a lot of the questions are being answered directly, so that's fantastic. We have one question here um, where there's a question to all um, from Brenda. Uh, could you share what your greatest challenge has been with regards to scaling in new markets? What is your greatest challenge? And to add to that, and how did you very briefly resolve that challenge? Anyone would, would like to volunteer to start? Uh, I can uh, at least address it. Well, I can start if you want. Thank you. I think one of, one, one of the greatest challenges or opportunities, if you want, is that um, to succeed in, uh, especially in Africa, it's uh, it's very very important to find uh, uh, local partners uh, that you know and trust and uh, spend time with. Um, I think uh, you cannot underestimate knowledge of the uh, the local market, and also I think the the it also requires uh, as a founder uh, that you have somebody in, in 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 sort of your founder founders team that uh, are willing to and have spent uh, spent time in the markets that you are addressing. I, th I think those are key takeaways uh, from my experience on on. Um, what you need to do to at least start growing, start scaling. Great. 
Bin schön. Um, uh, if I could go next, uh, I think from our perspective, like I mentioned, that uh, uh, skills and people are a very important factor for uh, not just scale, but to even get established in the first place. Uh, so for us, from where we stand, we think uh, in addition to partners, having the right people to work with, uh, both internally as a, as a complement to your team, uh, but also um, the people that uh, uh, in the partners that you get are a very key, um, um, a very key um, um, component to scale. Um, and it is both a two way thing. It's um, both the skills that they have, but as well as the trust that they have that you, uh, that, 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 you, that you understand each other, that you are uh, truthful about the things you want to do and achieve and that you have an open conversation. Uh, I think without the people, um, scale would be really hard. Um, and we also have an issue of um, different cultures and so on. Uh, but I think we all agree that uh, I think competence and trust, if you find them, are things that uh, uh, should cut across uh, um, cross-cultural partnerships. Great. Thank you, Martin. I agree. People, um, most important. Um, and also the most difficult. <laughs> um, we've tried. We've tried having people uh, employed. We've tried pe having people on a commission base. And um, it, it it comes down to 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 leadership. Um, and one thing that I find um, sometimes frustrating is that you don't always get, at least in Tanzania, you the people I work with don't always tell it in your face. They sometimes try to tell what you want to hear. And instead of acting on facts, um, they, and so that's a, that's a constant uh, conversation that, that, that I'm having with, with, with my colleagues in Tanzania. Thank you, Philip. Gabriel, you have any comments on that uh, question? Uh, uh, for us, it was it was a huge challenge to uh, find accurate statistics and, and the research. So it took us more than a year to really have a, or yeah, almost two years to have a good understanding of the market of in Rwanda and East Africa. There's not a lot of open source material to to access statistics, so we had to create our own, and it, it was a long process for us. So, so that was the main challenge, and I think it's still a huge challenge in East Africa is that there's not there's not uh, reliable statistics that you can use as a startup in many sectors. Great, thank you for that. Okay, I think we're, we're running a little bit, uh, bit low on time. Um, uh, so we might uh, wrap it up there. So I would like to uh, thank jo Joachim, Mikkel, Gabriel and uh, Philip for coming and pre presenting today. Um, great that you could all uh, share. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we we're talking today about uh, technology for good. And I think to some extent, the technology gods were with us today and that we uh, managed to hear everyone loud and clear. That doesn't always happen. Um, so I'm very, uh, very happy about that, that we could connect in uh, 10 different uh, presenters uh, today. Um, so I think we're going to just get into the, the wrap up. Um, in terms of what's next, I mean, this phase of the of the Go Af this Go Africa project is 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 coming to a close in the next couple of months. But you know, we do plan to keep the Go Africa community going, um, at least online, if nothing else. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to review all the content and questions um, that you shared through both chat and Q and A, and we're going to follow up and help make those connections. There are a lot of interest in in, in different actors connecting. Uh, in different places. So we'll go through those. Um, we'll be sharing those things with a, uh, uh, a panelist, uh, with the panelists today. Um, and then hopefully we can, uh, that can lead to some um, good collaborations in the future and, and, and good, good markets. And at the end of that day, more social impact. Um, so while this phase of Go Africa is coming to an end, we hope to be able to keep facilitating those interactions. And as mentioned before, please don't forget to join the Go Africa community on Facebook. 
um, and as mentioned, just uh, also to, to, to share things because the community is only as good as the, as the people on it um, and as what we share through, through the group. Um, so uh, please don't forget to join that um, and uh, so that we can, uh, we can keep connecting and also let you know about uh, future activities that, uh, that we could do as part of GoAfrica. So I'm going to try uh, this the best I can. Taksumiketa sante sana webale madati tatenda siyabonga and thanks um, from all of us at Inclusive Business Sweden on behalf of all those that uh, presented today. Thanks for joining us. Um, and finally, thank you to uh, to Tilavax for uh, for financing uh, the Go Africa program for the third time round. Um, and we hope to uh, to keep connecting with you. So uh, have a great day.